Hello there guys, it's Joel here, it's your Galax, and welcome back to my YouTube channel and it feels weird not vlogging but a question on an Instagram Q&A sparked the idea for this video the other day. I had a lot to say on the topic so I was like, do you know what, maybe I should just do a whole video about it because it's actually something that I want to talk about. Who knew making a video about something you want to talk about? Surprise. If you are new to the channel, uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button. And during quarantine, I have been vlogging. You can see like the past five weeks of my life. <laughs> Watching it back, I'm like, damn, what have I even done? Before I get into any of this, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this in the comments below. So don't forget to tell me what you think down there. They said to me on an Instagram q and I said, ask me anything. And they, they said, is it worth to buy these expensive clothes? My argument, as someone who spends a lot of money on some expensive pieces now and again, I said, so it really depends. I said, just because something is expensive doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't even mean that it's good quality. I've paid for pieces in the past to have them break straight away, whereas I've had some really affordable pieces in my wardrobe for years that have never ever let me down. I said, there's a lot of layers to luxury and designer brand identity, designer appreciation slash support, aesthetic, craftsmanship. It's important to remember that because someone else is buying something or wearing something doesn't mean that you have to get the exact same thing as well. Um, it's completely subjective and depends entirely on your own personal interest. Yeah, it's subjective. I mean, worth in itself, I'm going really, really deep here. This is like crazy. From my last week to be like, I'm making ramen to now being like, worth is different to everyone. You kind of see it a little bit in resale. Let's take the Nike Sakai's for example. These were around 100 and something retail, I think. And then if you wanted to get them after that, when they'd sold out, uh, resale is like 400, 500 pounds, which is obviously crazy because it's like four times the price that they're worth. But people pay that because the shoe itself is worth more to them than the original retail price. That's how resale works. It's people that want something that is no longer available because it's worth more to them so the price goes up, you see? That's like a basic fundamental. But then when designer brands come out with clothing, like t-shirts and stuff that are like 200 pounds or 300 pounds or 400 pounds, it then begins to be like, well, is that actual piece of clothing worth that amount of money? So that's why things get kind of tricky. I want to say, first of all, that I am, or anyone that can afford designer pieces is extremely, extremely privileged um, to be able to afford them in the first place. Like, if that is an option, you are extremely privileged. I am extremely priv privileged in the fact that I am able to buy designer shoes um, or buy designer pieces, right? So anyone that is able to buy those pieces is already in a place of privilege, okay? So you've gotta recognize that at first. Like, it's a luxury, it is a luxury, because some people can't afford those types of things or that specific brand, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's another thing to take into account as well. So then you've got people from different types of life that, you know, were raised, um, we here in the UK call it the high street. I don't know what people in other countries call it, but it's like, the regular clothing stores like H&M, Topshop, where it's like £30 for a t-shirt or £40 for a pair of jeans or whatever. And that is kind of drummed into our heads from when we were younger as that is how much clothing is worth or like that is how much it costs to put like a t-shirt on your back. Do you know what I mean? So like that's like the initial set price. Um, and in our heads, that's how much clothing is worth. If you've been raised shopping in those places, in your head, it's drilled in that like, Oh, a t-shirt is around that. But then we get in this whole other realm of when things start costing more, in our heads we're like, oh, well, it must be better quality or it must be made from better fabrics. And then the whole can of worms of better or like what is good. And it's just like, <laughs> this is so deep, okay. I'm probably rambling a lot, but I hope you're on the same page as me. And then you get the type of people that are born into, I guess we would say money or that kind of lifestyle that, you know, have shopped at like department stores all their life 
Um, so to them, when they're like, oh, that coat's only like 2K, they're like, oh my God, that's so good. Like that's the price of a coat. Do you see what I mean? People are raised differently. Um, but then I guess you even get people that have a lot of money that will not spend it on clothes because they don't see it. It's not worth a lot to them. Do you get where I'm going with this? Everyone's individual idea of money and worth is completely down to them as a person. So that's the whole kind of like idea of worth, I guess. I've been privileged enough to be able to purchase these types of things um, over the past, only the past like five or so years where I've had enough money to be able to be like, do you know what, I can, I can afford this. Um, and I've been really disappointed with some pieces. I've purchased some pieces, the quality has not felt great. I've either had like pieces break, threads come loose. Obviously if it's a delicate piece of clothing then that stuff like that is gonna happen whether it's expensive or not. But then, and then you can get really long lasting pieces of designer as well that last for a really, really long time. Each, <laughs> each aspect of it is so like, either or, it's very, very confusing. So that's why when this person asked me, you know, is it worth buying expensive clothes? It's like, <laughs> that really fucking depends. <laughs> so I've kind of spoken about how much it's worth to the individual. No matter how much it costs to produce it, to uh, put it together, to ship it out to you, whatever you're purchasing, there's also how much it's worth to you as a person and what you can afford. I, I don't really like the fact that designer pieces are so expensive. Like, I understand why. I interned for menswear designers here in London when I first moved here. And I saw the, you know, I saw the effort that went into starting your own brand, starting your own business. Um, the market on, you know, things like t-shirts is insane. Like the designer I was working for was selling t-shirts for 300, uh, like 300 pounds. Um, but it was their design screen printed on a tee. I think the tee costs like 30 pounds, but then you have to factor in like the amount of time spent designing the prints um, the amount of time, you know, putting everything into production, like sourcing everything. Everyone that the designer had to pay as well. So that's why this, for the small brand that I worked for, their prices were so high because of everything that they put into it. But then you get the, the big, the big dogs like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Balenciaga, who have been around for years and years and years. And their prices are so high because they're in that realm of like luxury slash designer. And then you factor in all their costs as well as a business. The pieces can be really intricate or um, very sought after, meaning their price can go up, meaning they can charge more because a lot of people want it more. Doesn't necessarily mean it's worth it in terms of how much money it costs to make it, you know what I mean? Anyway, it's still rambling. Um, yeah, so I actually don't like, I, well, like, why would I like that things cost a lot of money? Quite often it's just like the lifestyle or where you look for pieces or where you're interested in or what you're interested in. And that brings some, me to my next point, it's like interest. So everyone has hobbies everyone has interests everyone has has things that they gravitate towards things that they're passionate about that they're interested in and some people like fashion some people like clothing some people love you know everything to do with it let's say <laughs> this is so far removed because i know nothing about football or sports but you have sports fans they buy season tickets to go and watch the match they watch the match with their, they watch their matches. This is really weird for me to talk about. With their friends, you know, they get together, uh, they enjoy it, they talk about it a lot, they're passionate about it and they're interested in it because it's what they enjoy. In the same way that people that are interested in fashion enjoy watching fashion shows, they enjoy, you know, reading about certain collections, inspirations, they enjoy seeing the art that is presented to them. So you look at fashion in the way that it is art but it's like another world because it also has a practical use. Like we use it to dress ourselves. Everyone has to wear clothes. It's basically the law because you'd get probably arrested if you walked around naked. Um, but do you see what I mean? Like some people have passion and interest for clothing um, as art. So in that sense, like someone 
who has that passion and can watch uh, a fashion show from Balenciaga and be like, oh my God, you know, Denma has really, really changed the whole fashion landscape in the past few years with Vetmont and now Balenciaga and really be invested in him as a designer, the brands that he's, you know, been involved with, the, the way that he constructs, the way that he presents everything. So just in the same way that someone might be a huge supporter of their, you know, Manchester United or Manchester City or whatever. I know it's a weird comparison, but it's literally just come off the top of my head and thinking what some people are passionate about and some people are not. But because they are clothes and because what, we're, what we wear and some people aren't interested in that at all, some people literally just want to go to Primark and buy like clean t-shirts or like t-shirts that they can wear um, for practical use only and they don't care you know they might be like oh I don't have a green top so I'll buy a green one this time do you know what I mean whereas some people are on the complete opposite end of the spectrum and they want to tell a story with their outfits they want to really be enveloped in everything to do with their personal style so again literally just interest and that could that's the difference to me as to why someone might spend a lot of money on pieces of clothing but obviously then there are people that have a lot of money that can afford this kind of stuff and it's just their that's their primark you know they will go into louis vuitton and be like oh i don't have this one i need a red top you know and they might look they might dress terribly just because you spend a lot of money on clothes doesn't mean that you look good people have said that to me and i'm like bitch have you been on the street have you been outside like Please. I, I myself get very frustrated because I will come across pieces or see things, you know, on Pinterest or Instagram and be like, oh my God, this jacket's amazing. It's really, really nice. I'd love to wear something like that. And then do some research and actually go and find it and find out it's 500 pounds. And I'm like, why? Why does everything I like have to be so expensive? And then I like, I literally look at affordable places every day. I look at Zara, I look at ASOS, even Bershka, like, loads of places all the time and it's very rare that I will find something that I really like but when I do find something that I really like no matter how much it costs whether it's from ASOS or whether it's a piece from Prada if I like the piece then I like the piece I can't not like it because of the price like if something's expensive it doesn't put me off it and if it's something cheap it doesn't put me off it either it makes me if it's cheap it makes me like it even more yeah i get very frustrated that i have expensive taste for some reason like these nights when i saw my friend sarah and kim from black dope wearing these on instagram i was like oh, i've never had jordans before i don't really know anything about them um, but i love that colorway so i was like oh, okay I'll, I'll look into it and then found out they were like 300 400 pounds i was like fuck sake but i'm in a position where i can spend that kind of money on a pair of sneakers so yeah that is the whole kind of like passionate side of things so people that have uh, a passion for a certain designer a certain brand or a certain kind of even aesthetic or like just for their own personal style if it's something that they're very interested in it's their hobby that's where they might spend their money so clothes will be worth more to them Quite often with designer brands, you get unique kind of cuts, unique, unique silhouettes, unique materials that you don't often see on the high street or more affordable places. Also the high street and more affordable places tend to get their inspiration from luxury designers and then kind of it gets filtered down. I don't know if you've seen The Devil Wears Prada. If you've not, what are you doing? But Miranda Priestley explains it very, very well. <laughs> In a sense that even color palette, just ideologies and stuff like that are passed and filtered down through to the high street stores. And that is kind of where they draw their inspiration. But that's to me, is another beautiful moment because then you can get these innovative, like interesting pieces for a fraction of the price. I do, in a way, think that certain pieces last longer from designer brands. Um, like my Acne Studios t-shirts, they're a very, very thick kind of cotton and I've had these for about two years now. Um, they wash fine, they keep their shape. Whereas t-shirts from cheaper places tend to go funky after a few wash. But then again, maybe that's the essence of this t-shirt because it's more structured, because it's made with a thicker material. It's just gonna keep its shape, you know what I mean? If I bought a more flimsy t-shirt from Acne that was softer and wasn't necessarily as structured, would it keep its shape? So I feel like the quality and the how long it lasts also depends on the piece itself. To sum up, 
Are designer clothes really worth it? I think that you should stick to your personal style, stay true to what you like and what you believe you look good in, what makes you feel confident, comfortable, happy, all of those things. My kind of short answer would be that I like to see clothing as art, so it's worth different prices to different people. Like there are certain brands that I don't really connect or resonate with, like Rick Owens, for example. Like I would not pay any of the prices that they set because that is worth nothing to me. Do you know what I mean? But someone might really, really love Rick Owens and that might be their like holy grail and they're willing to spend their money on it because it's worth a lot to them. So is designer clothing really worth it? It completely depends on the individual. I know that's the answer you were wanting because that's what, you know, the best possible answer is for all of this. Um, but it's true and you can't escape the fact that some things are worth more to some people than they are to others. So anyway, this has been a big rambly video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please let me know your opinion down there. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you want to see in the future and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.